Dwarf wall separation disease is present at birth or develops soon after. It involves the separation of the dorsal hoof wall from the underlying structure. Splits occur within the layers of the hoof wall and these layers break away when they come in contact with the ground. HWSD is an autosomal recessive genetic disorder of the hoof wall. All four hoofs will be affected. The patterns of inheritance in HWSD follow basic Mendelian principles. An affected foal can only be produced by breeding two carriers together, and the chance of the resultant foal being affected is 1 in 4, or 25%. The chances are random, and any outcome is possible for each foal born. HWSD impacts affected ponies to different degrees, and environment can affect severity. Mildly affected ponies may be managed, while serious cases have resulted in euthanasia. In severe cases, ponies may suffer fungal infection, abscessing and laminitis as a secondary condition. HWSD is not an acquired condition and should not be confused with white Lyme disease. The Connemara Pony Research Group initiated the work that has led to the discovery of the HWSD mutation. The research was funded in the main by donations made by concerned people from around the world. Apache's DNA contributed to this research. The genetic research was conducted by Banach Laboratory, UC Davis, and the scientists from Banach discovered the mutation and have developed the screening test that is now available through UC Davis. The test will enable informed breeding decisions and will ensure breeders need never produce an affected foal. Carriers of HWSD are themselves completely unaffected. It is extremely important to continue breeding with carrier ponies to ensure that genetic diversity within the breed is retained. Within a couple of months of Apache's birth, the hoof wall on all four hoofs started to fray and peel away. Apache and his dam were transported to the Port Augusta Veterinary Clinic for monitoring and assessment. Apache was in due course weaned at the clinic and stayed on for ongoing assessment and treatment. During this period, Apache was yarded in a covered yard and attached open yard and exercised in a sandy round yard. Apache's hoofs were filed daily to take off any frayed edges and a variety of improvised solutions from bubble wrap to tape were trialled to allow his hoofs to grow down and enable him to move reasonably well. X-rays were also taken in part to ensure no pedal bone rotation. Owing to the rocky conditions, large paddock sizes and lack of horse facilities at the station, Apache was transported into the Adelaide Hills to live with our trainer where he could be carefully managed. Various treatments were trialled, including glue-on shoes and casting tape, none of which proved effective for ongoing treatment or management. Specialist barefoot trimmers had been engaged, and once Apache's hoofs had grown sufficiently, he was fitted with renegade hoof boots. A thrush treatment powder was also utilised to help prevent thrush developing behind the separated wall. The boots proved very successful over the summer months, while conditions were mostly dry, allowing Apache to live out in the paddock during the day. Apache was now nearly two years of age and was growing and filling out. There was concern over the ability of his hoofs to support his increasing body weight. As autumn approached and rain started to fall, it looked like life would need to be spent back in the stable with exercise in the covered round yard. After consultation with the vet and consideration for Apache's quality of life and future well-being, the difficult decision to euthanize him was made. Our sincere thanks to the dedicated group of professionals who treated Apache over two years and whose continued efforts and concern ensured he was as comfortable and as well managed as possible during his short life. wall separation disease is preventable. Test your breeding stock.